My name is Shirley Koshi Chentateo, and I am a postdoctoral scholar with the Yukon Health, which is the University of Connecticut's School of Medicine. Yes, uh, because the logic is what got to me. Uh, I would love uh, trying to figure out problems on my own. Uh, I distinctly remember working out an integration worksheet from like 10 in the evening to like midnight when I was in my 12th grade in, in school. And I remember my parents watching a movie in the background. And I was so enthralled with the math that I'd forgotten what the movie was about, you know? Uh, so I think uh, the answer would be yes. During my high school uh, in India, as well as in the Middle East, you have to kind of choose your major when you go into your 11th and 12th grade. So this is between, for your junior and senior year. So um, I had to choose between science major, uh, commerce and uh, arts major. I was into psychology at that point and I was like, okay, maybe I should do an arts major, but I really, really wanted math to be one of the subjects. And I just remember the professor saying, oh, I'm so sorry, if you're doing the art stream, you can't do math. And I was like, okay, that's it. No way, that's not happening. So I chose the science field and I chose, uh, I chose math primarily. And then it just happened to come with physics, chemistry, biology and English, you know? So, and I did have an option of choosing computer science instead of biology, but I was like, you know what, let me just do biology. Uh, but I think the major thing was I could choose math. Um, I could just enjoy it. I think that's, that's when I knew that I wanted to be a mathematician. I would define myself as an applied mathematician who loves biology and STEM education. So a little bit about the work that I do in biology is currently I am working with dentists on how to model biofilms. And what I mean by biofilms is plaque. So it's like a microbial community within your mouth. And I use something called an agent-based model, which just simply means that the bacteria are agents, they have a bunch of rules, like they'll grow, they'll divide, they decay, they shove each other apart. And this is what I do. So I construct the agent-based model, based on the data from the experiments. And then I also kind of try and optimize it to say, oh, what conditions would it would optimize the depth of the microbial community? Or would, in, uh, would it be better if we had more probiotics, then that would be a better oral health. So that's the kind of bio map that I do. And in terms of education, what I do is um, we, I'm part of a lab called the Series Lab, which, is, uh, which was constructed by the three of us from Clemson. We are Clemson alum. Uh, one is a um, science education uh, specialist and the other is another mathematician. And the three of us uh, wanted to have the space where we kind of uh, use education data and we look at it quantitatively as well as qualitatively. So qualitative is all our friend uh, who's the science education specialist, but the quantitative is uh, my friend and I, where we do, uh, we use statistics, we use agent-based modeling, and we look at the trajectory of students with disabilities from school, from high school to higher education. And we look at like longitudinal data sets, so data sets that have been collected over a span of a decade. And we kind of see how many students have stayed the course, how many students have dropped out, then how many students of color are there, how many students of color and with disabilities are there. So we look at multiple identities as well. So that's the kind of math that I do. Um, I would like to answer this question in three parts. So the first part was, uh, when as a student in India, um, it's very different as a student with a disability in India you're not really given the right kind of tools. And um, in India, I used to walk. Um, I was diagnosed with muscular dystrophy when I was a kid, when I was three years old. And um, I did my schooling in Middle East and I came to India for my undergrad and my first masters. 
So um, it's very different when you go to India. There's no special accommodations that are given to you because of your disability. So um, at that time I was walking, so it was fine. But then um, 10 years ago, um, and then I, I also had a business of my own. I was tutoring students in the locality. And then 10 years ago, I had to transition to using a wheelchair. So that was, um, that was a, a different experience for me. And uh, I think the, when, when I used to get down, something that used to help me a lot, and I, I know I sound like a nerd, but integration formulas used to help me a lot because I would, um, I would feel down. I would feel, you know, like my life has changed. So now I need something to center me. I need something to kind of keep me on the path that I want to go. And it, what really helped me was the integration formulas, which for some odd reason, I don't remember any of them now. Uh, but uh, that was phase one. And then the second bit is when I came here for my PhD. So it's a, it was a shock to my system because uh, in India, like when I did my undergrad in an all girls college and I did my uh, masters in an all boys college, but masters, they allowed girls in there. So my classes were predominantly female. So when I came here, it was a shock to my system when I saw in the class that there was only like four or five females in a math class, in a PhD class. You know, that was a little hard for me. I, means I, I remember going to an abstract algebra class where I was only female. And all I thought of was, oh, well, this is how my male colleagues felt when I was in my master's. The third bit for me is the expectation to be a workaholic, you know, just because you're a mathematician, that, you know, you should work, um, you should work, 80 hours a week. Uh, you should work during weekends. Why are you not checking your emails during the weekends? Um, so for me, that was a struggle because I refuse to work on the weekends. And also, I don't think it's a healthy thing for myself. So I think those were the three kind of struggles, like the major struggles that I had was the transition to using a wheelchair, then uh, coming here and having a culture shock of being an international student and uh, having a very different uh, gender makeup, I guess, of the class. That and then the workaholic thing. My proudest accomplishment was when my advisor came out of my uh, meeting, uh, sorry, my thesis defense and said, congratulations, Dr. Shirley. That was my proudest achievement. Uh, and uh, going um, for my uh, graduation ceremony, for my hooding. Again, I would like to give a three-prong answer to this. Uh, one, um, my family is my biggest role model, like my dad, my mom, my sister, my brother. Because my dad and mom are the oldest in their family. They have never been college educated. And then they moved from small towns in Kerala in India, and they moved to the Middle East as well as to Germany. My mom was a nurse in Germany. And then uh, they moved to the Middle East and uh, that's where we did our schooling. So they raised us and they raised us in a language that was not their first language. They raised us in English and um, they used Malayalam, which is our native language. Uh, to kind of um, talk about us when we were not there, but that's a different story. But, uh, you know, it was harder for them to teach us in a language that they had never studied in. And then my sister was the first college graduate in our family. She came to the States for journalism. And then uh, she stayed on here. She got her citizenship. And uh, she's now, um, you know, a DEI specialist. Uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion specialist. My brother wanted to go as far away as from us as possible, so he went to the an Australian continent. So he went to Australia. He got two masters, and then he decided to come back to Dubai, and he decided to be an engineer. My family would be my first set of role models. My second would be my friends. 
So my friends during my graduate, my undergraduate, my friends here, uh, without whom I don't think I would have gotten through my PhD or any of my degrees or even any of my health transitions, like when I had to transition into using a wheelchair. And the third would be uh, my tuition kids, like all my kids from India who I tutored, who I've seen grow up into wonderful adults. And uh, I think all the students that I mentor here as well. So I think they have been my role models in different phases of my life. Do not be defined by what other people think your field or your role or your personality should be like. People may tell you that you're a mathematician, you should read only mathematics textbooks, you should not watch a lot of TV, you should work 80 hours a week, and you should just publish and um, that is their definition of what a mathematician should be. That is not yours. So define it, enjoy it, because once you enjoy your work, you will express that joy to the people around you. And uh, another thing, and I'm going to quote a BTS lyric here, is that you know you have to love yourself, and no one's going to love you the way you will love you. So keep that in mind when you go to any part of your career, like be it early career, be it a graduate student, undergrad, like retirement, whatever it is, just be happy and that joy will translate into your work.